Ibrutinib can be a useful drug for patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia and relapsed metal cell lymphoma, but it's been reported to be associated with atrial fibrillation in some of the uh, registration studies. However, given how common AF is today, what does that finding actually mean? So we are talking about a pooled analysis of atrial fibrillation adverse events in Ibrutinib randomized control registration trials, and to do so, I'm with Dr. Jennifer Brown, who is an MD and a PhD, and the director of the Chronic Lymphocytic Leukemia Center at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Now, what precisely did these early studies suggest in terms of ibrutinib use and how much AF seemed to be maybe a problem? So it was really the first randomized trial in which an emergent signal for atrial fibrillation was seen in the ibrutinib arm compared to the control arm, which was ofatumumab. And that hadn't really been observed in the smaller single arm studies before. But the rate across multiple studies was about 6 to 9 percent. And so we sought to look at a larger patient population by pooling the randomized trials in order to have a comparator arm to compare to the ibrutinib arm. I mean, given the age of some of the patients, it would make sense that some of these patients may be just coming up with atrial fibrillation on their own. So what did you find? Right. And so, the, again, that was part of the reason for doing the analysis of four randomized trials. So we had over 700 patients treated with ibrutinib, over 700 patients treated with comparator, which was a variety of different, more standard agents. Right. And so we found a fourfold risk of atrial fibrillation associated with being enrolled on the ibrutinib arm, although patient characteristics were generally matched on the two arms. And the overall rate was 6.5% on ibrutinib compared to about 1.5% on comparator. And we're also able to do univariable and multivariable analysis for risk factors for atrial fibrillation. And the significant predictors in the multivariable analysis included receiving ibrutinib, older age, and a prior history of atrial fibrillation. But even if you had all three of those, it was still more likely that you would not develop atrial fibrillation in the course of the time, which was a median follow-up of about 16 months. Which is then, encouraging. Right. And in the case of the, when the AAF occurred, was it manageable, given the fact that they're on this other drug? it's still a, a, a manageable disease. Right. In fact, many, about half the patients didn't have to stop or hold the abrutinib, and the great majority oh, yes. continued on abrutinib, and they just received relatively standard of care management for atrial fibrillation. Most patients had one event. There were occasional patients with multiple events, and, but only about 10% of patients discontinued therapy due to the atrial fibrillation. So is it safe to say that if a patient has a history of AF, make sure that they're on guideline-directed care for that AF before you initiate or as you're initiating the uh, glutenib? Yes, I would say certainly. The one consideration that comes up has to do with anticoagulation Correct. because ibrutinib does cause platelet dysfunction. And we still don't have a large amount of data about the safety of anticoagulation. In this study, a majority of the patients did receive at least transient anticoagulation when they developed their atrial fibrillation. It seems that it was probably transient during the episode and then stopped. And there was a slight increase in bleeding events more in the abrutinib versus comparator, but they were mostly very minor. There were no major. So overall, the news is encouraging. Yes. given the early uh, concerns. Yes, but something to be aware of and manage. In the case of uh, the ASH Clinical Malignancies meeting, where we are here in Chicago, please look around at uh, ASH Clinical News for some of the rest of our coverage. And here online, where I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.